Welcome. Today we're here with Paco de la India. Paco, if you don't know, has been traveling around the world, running in every city. Um, he's known on Twitter as Run with Bitcoin, and he's been traveling and paying all his expenses with Bitcoin. Um, we spoke to Paco a few months back uh, for the Bit Refill podcast uh, to the moon. But now he's here for Living on Crypto to discuss his experiences living on crypto all over the world. Paco, how are you? Hi, guys. Good evening. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm doing really good, man. Thank you so much for having me over. It's so nice to see you all. <laughs> Welcome back. Welcome back. Um, Paco, where are you at this moment? I am in Sri Lanka. I'm in a city called Gaul. It's the southernmost city. I think so after this, if I keep swimming, I'll reach Antarctica. <laughs> <laughs> okay um last week when we first started messaging to to see if you wanted to come on the show you were somewhere else where were you last week i was in uh, uh singapore yeah that was in singapore and prior to that in cambodia yeah. <laughs> out of your most recent travels where has been the most bitcoin friendly was singapore the most bitcoin friendly it's like two-faced you know they'll be like hey we love you but we won't say it to you. And the two days just before I reached uh, Singapore, they removed the Bitcoin ATMs. And I was like, what kind of love is this? <laughs> and uh, so, but I think so, Thailand, definitely, hands down, they say 0% crypto tax. There's a huge Bitcoin developers community, the ones who develop the Umbrella Network, Lightning. There's a huge, huge, huge community, Kofanyan, Kosamui, Phuket, Bangkok, Chiang Mai, you name it, you can move your money left, right, center there. Uh, so I, I really like, like that. Dubai is catching on. Like Dubai is more about like, hey, we have it all watchers, but they're still coming down. But I, I definitely feel that there, there are a lot of traders in Cambodia, a lot of traders. The best OTC market is Singapore. How much you want to turn? 10 million, 100 million, 1,000 million Singapore. <laughs> what about Sri Lanka? How's Sri Lanka been? Oh, Sri Lanka is catching on. So the country is in chaos. If, I, if you don't know, their currency is plummeted. Over the last one year, they have lost over 100%. So if it was $1 was 100 rupees. Now it is 200 rupees. And that is if you have dollars. But if you have USDT, they'll give you 250. So the black market is huge here. Everybody's trading. And as we move forward, the government will be moving forward to adopting it. So they are in literally like hyperinflation is kicked in. It is, it is chaos here. It is like, it is like Turkey right here because they, they, they were living on tourism they used to have 50,000 tourists come in every day and now they're down to like 3,000 a day so and the funny part is nobody brings in dollars because if you have USDT or if you have any other coins you get a higher premium of 25 percent so the country is in chaos literally in Sri Lanka with with the currency crisis that that you liken to Turkey or Venezuela um, yeah. has this been going on for a long time or is this like a recent development uh, so let's say over the last two years, ever since COVID hit them, they stopped getting the money inflow, right? If you are having constant inflow of money. And then they had let, taken so many loans, debts, debts, debts. Like China owns them practically. They just own the entire country. China owns Cambodia too. So China is what practically China is doing is it thinks 20 years forward. If you remember the Silk Route, it's no more the Silk Route. Now they're getting the portal cities. So they'll buy the port towns. So watch out, Colombia. They'll be coming down there to get one of your portal cities. I'm telling you, they are thinking really way forward ahead. It gives me goosebumps. But I saw this in Cambodia. They took over a city called Kampot, and they have taken it forward. They tore it down, set up a new thing for five million new people of their country. And the funny thing is, they do not hire local people. They get their own people to come down. And this is what they did here. Now in uh, they got the port city in Sri Lanka. And yeah, this is what they do. They, and they give you all these loans and then they come over and they're like, we own the country. If you don't know, USA, like USA feels USA is there, but. That's super interesting. Yeah. Um, so besides people trading peer to peer, yeah. um, is there like Bitcoin ATMs in Sri Lanka or like exchanges? Like, is there any like infrastructure or is it mostly just people peer to peer on their phones? Let's say Sri Lanka could be the next Salvador beach if things go right. I've been talking to the youth down here and if, if they pick it up forward rather than just trading in coins, it could be the next Bitcoin beach. The next Bitcoin island, you could call it. It's huge. It's humongous. They do not have any exchanges. I keep hearing these rumors, but there's nothing yet. Uh, like they are talking, they say in two months we'll have it, in three months we'll have it because the port city is crypto friendly. As I said, the new port city. 
So they're looking at another three months to come down for it. The port city that you're talking about here in Sri Lanka is different than the port city that you mentioned in Cambodia that's controlled by uh, China? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a new one. They have, they have, okay, they have, okay. they have right up, <laughs> up the ocean and then they have like taken this over and then they have like built it up. And it's, 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 it's like crypto friendly. People have started buying things down there on crypto. So it's going to be the crypto friendly place. And, it, and it's the Indian Ocean close by to everything, you know? Close by all the action. If you see properly, from China can move down their goods from Shanghai, Singapore, Singapore, Comfort, Cambodia. So Singapore will slowly lose it out to Singa Comfort, Cambodia, and then move it to Sri Lanka, move on to the other side, the African, and to the European side. They own the ports. Yeah. Um, back to Singapore. You mentioned that they took out all the Bitcoin ATMs shortly before you arrived. How did you manage to overcome that situation? Oh my God, OTC, the biggest huge OTC. And it's, leave everything. I'm going to pause you all, listen to all. Bit refill is the best in Singapore. You can do anything and everything with Bit refill, man. I remember I just had the best time with Bit refill. Like, I think I was the most comfortable. I never bothered about anything. Like, Bit refill is just so cool there. From getting your Grab vouchers to your 7 Eleven vouchers to anything, man. Like, I even going down to the fancy Sentosa Islands. Or buying down any Apple products, you can just go for it, man. It's just amazing. I really loved it. I think so. Bit refill made, but OTC was there. There were few restaurants that accept crypto down there. Uh, so yeah, Singapore is really pro. Thanks to Hong Kong getting shut down, so most of the banks have been shut, uh, shifting down there. Something really crazy happened. I'm just gonna add in there. I know it's it's not it's, it's gonna be something funny. I hosted a Bitcoin meetup at the Draper Startup House, and at the same time we had people from Standard Chartered Bank, the Boston Consultancy Group, and the Bitcoin Maxis, all in one room. And it was the most hilarious moment like, where they were just like, okay, we know what's the end. You guys are figuring out what's the end. Let's bring it on. Like, it was literally down there. That was the most thing. <laughs> um, have you been doing, like, meetups and stuff everywhere, everywhere that you've been traveling? Yeah, I've hosted about, like, 35-plus meetups now. I would like in the next in the six countries. So I host Bitcoin only meetup because generally people are just trading, you know. Everybody has their Binance account. By the way, Binance shut down in Singapore. It was 13th of February was the last day. Uh, so every place I go, people are just trading, you know, and nobody knows Bitcoin is the money. Bitcoin is the reality. Bitcoin is the future. Like we are living it. So it's good to just go down there and teach them about what is Bitcoin, what is time preference, what is stock to flow ratio. What is creating value? So yeah, I've been hosting that to just do that, like, you know, awareness where people should consider growing their Bitcoin over than growing their Dogecoin. Yesterday, somebody in the meetup tells me, Shiba, you know, is going to go $1. And I was like, shit. Oh my God. And this guy is a teacher. People come to his courses to learn crypto and he's telling them, Shiba, you know, is $1. Like, come on, like, what am I like? Like, what is this? Like, doesn't make sense, man. Come on. Too mad, like, yeah, it's messed up. <laughs> Did you notice anyone talking about Wakanda, Inu, while, while you were there? <laughs> what happened to that coin? Where is he? Yeah. I think it got rug pulled or something. I'm shimming. I mean, I mean uh, it sounds usually what happens or something like that. Um, yeah, yeah, poor Jerry, man. Uh, not that he have, has ever bought or sold any of Wakanda, Inu. It's just, we're just, it's all of, inside joke um i guess like a question i had for you man like uh how do you decide what um what countries you go to like what what, what goes through your mind when you're deciding so initially i had the plan and i set it up uh, like i will do slowly gradually from asia circumnavigate the globe to the polynesia move forward to, to americas and ended up in africa but thanks to the omnicon virus everything went to for a toss so as of now i'm moving around into the countries that are opening up so as I move forward, I'm moving to Qatar next because it's open. They say a day of quarantine. I'm like, a day doesn't hurt me. And from Qatar, I am moving over to mostly Nigeria. And if not, I'm moving over to Buenos Aires because Buenos Aires is falling down. I feel if, if, if I, I don't know if you guys remember when my journey started, I said like it was $1 was 100 peso. And today it is $1, 200 peso. It's in five months, man. Come on. Like it's That's chaos. Like and. And, and they say strike has taken over there. Bitcoin is everywhere. I'm in touch with the Drapers. So I am really tracking down places that are falling down. I would love to go down to Turkey for that matter, Nigeria. 
like it is it is just to show like see what is happening is as i move forward like i'm finding places that are open and where bitcoin can take over and i feel with russia taking this strong stance yeah i mean they uh, they've taken a very polarizing stance that's for sure man i guess like um what do you before you go to a country what do you do like, do you do any because obviously i'm imagining if people want to like follow what you're doing or or like do something similar what do you do before you go to a, do you research the country at all find out what bitcoin's like if there's any way you can use things see what bit refill has what what do you do i definitely check out bit refill and i'll tell you bit refill in cambodia and in sri lanka only you just offer is mobile recharges i guess that's all bit refill does that around the world and uh, i do check that second is i reach out on twitter and third is the telegram groups so from there all and then i go down to the basic tuck tuck go or google whatever you use i go down and i type type down bitcoin sri lanka and i find down whose articles have come down stock them find them on linkedin telegram signal twitter i swear to god there are just so many social medias it's just pain in the ass literally but track them down send them a message and ask to be a part of their group so that we can host a meet up and get connected to the community and yeah that's the bigger purpose to show there are humans around the world who believe in bitcoin who are happy to believe like sri lanka is a place where they love usdt like they would rather have your usdt than your lankan rupees i think it's super interesting that you're kind of um picking out places that are having currency devaluation crises to visit like so your bitcoin goes further or your dollars go further um, you mentioned Nigeria, Turkey, uh, Buenos Aires, um, Sri Lanka. Uh, is that like intentional? As as I'm moving forward, they're really pro. They're like really open. They are, they are like, we are open, come visit our country. And I feel that country is a place where if you go down there, like I, you were, I was hosting a meetup, I had about 50 people come over for the Bitcoin meetup here in Colombo, Sri Lanka. And I could just share the basic things of what is Bitcoin, you know? And I feel if you share something, they end up doing their research. Otherwise, everybody is bloody just trading, you know, everybody's trading for the dollars. And I feel these countries, if you can go down and share a message, I feel that will have an impact. Like, let's say the torch, the Olympic torch moves around. And in our country, we have 1 billion people. We still don't get gold medals, all right? <laughs> okay. But still, the torch comes to our country. <laughs> it is like that. So I feel if this can go around and people can start seeing how it can happen because it's the youth of the country that is going to take it forward. And the youth are the one who are trading and everybody wanted their financial liberty. This is what the youth has in a country. So yeah, that's what I'm like going down to just share what Bitcoin can solve, right? Rather than just sitting on Twitter and inside shouting hodl. As someone from India, I wanted to get your feedback on your thoughts of the new crypto tax laws that uh, India is proposing. It's done. It's 30% tax right away. So profit are mine. So if you make a profit, let's say you made a $1,000 profit, we tax charge you 30% on it. Let's say the first trade you did $1,000. The second trade you made a loss of $500. Losses are yours. Profit is mine. Even if I send you the crypto profit is mine, tax it, tax it. So it's a very simple thing. And I really appreciate the fact like uh, it's a game of chess, you know, everybody makes a move. Uh, in India, there was a huge arbitrage movement. People caught up 20 to 25%. Every exchange made 25% profit. I'm telling you till date is an arbitrage of 15%. So they, everybody's made their money. I feel it's time for them to pay back something because the government doesn't understand it. As I say, in Sri Lanka, there's an arbitrage option of 25 percent. There you go. So I'm, I'm, I'm really in, uh, I really respect the fact like they, are, they have taken a stance and they haven't banned it because uh, this means that the government is open and they're really keen on taking and understanding the technology because, yeah, man, as you see, when I say the youth runs the show. Yeah. So basically, it is just like uh, the people in the 60s have already made their money. They do not really care about it what is the future you know they have lived their life and uh, the people the youth is the one who is paying those heavy prices and they are the one who are finding alternative means of making money so if you talk to them and if you share with them what bitcoin solves and you tell them that guys check this out read this book called the bitcoin standard i wanted to ask you do you have any uh, bitcoin meetups planned for Sri Lanka right now while you're while you're in Sri Lanka yeah yeah I I, I hosted one in Colombo uh, the second one is tomorrow in Gaul the third one is in Kandy and the fourth one is in Jaffna 
So yeah, I'm hosting these four meetups, and the first one had about 50 plus people come over. All were NFT people, all were traders, all were the people who did not know what Bitcoin really is. So it was really nice to talk to them about it, tell them where there is acceptance of Bitcoin around the world, how a tuk-tuk driver got a Bitcoin, how you can get a guide on Bitcoin, how you can get 7-Eleven vouchers on Bitcoin, just to show them like this is all possible. I had one more question for you. Um, how many people uh, have you orange pill? do you think? And how do you do it? Just for people who want to know, like if they're traveling, how they can help, you know, get people into Bitcoin in different countries. Uh, I guess I would have orange pill somewhere around 80 or 100 people. I'm not so sure, sure on those numbers, but it is somewhere around there. I generally talk to them about Bitcoin and people are really curious to what is Bitcoin. And then they really want to get some. And when I tell them that it's just $5 and they're like, oh, wow, cool. Like I orange pill two people in a place called Ella. And they were really happy. I got myself beer and pizza and they downloaded a blue wallet. I gave them money on Lightning. And as well as I gave them some money on Chain. So it, people really like the Lightning aspect where they immediately have it. So I tell them about Bitcoin. I tell them the five things, the basics, peer-to-peer, -peer, willing to give, willing to receive. Uh, the basics, everything about like, you know, censorship proof, no trusted third party, you can move the money anywhere around the world. <laughs> so yeah, that's how I tell them and they really get excited. And because everybody's, the point is most of them have been scammed. I'll tell you the 2017 bubble really scammed a lot of people. So most of them lost a lot of their coins and they lost a lot of their money. And because of that only people are really skeptic about it. But then I tell them like you can have that $5, $10. And I tell them about my journey that, hey, I'm traveling the world on Bitcoin. I'm making these videos. So they would really like it, like the fact. And then they, then they jump on. Curiosity always is the best. Curiosity is the mother of this world. Um, Paco, since you've started traveling on Bitcoin, um, how many nations would you say you've traveled to? I have done six now. So I start from India, UAE, Thailand, Cambodia, Singapore, Sri Lanka. And now I'll be picking up the past phase. So I'll be doing about 10, 10 days every country because COVID is relaxed. Yeah. I know L Lawrence asked like where you were planning to head in the future. What's the uh, very next country that you're going to travel to after Sri Lanka? Uh, I am in talks to go to Qatar. So oh, okay. Because from Qatar, I, yeah, from Qatar, I can, I'll have a, it's, it's like a central port. From Qatar, there are a lot of flights that move around. So I'll enter into Africa or into Southern America. I'm really keen to go down to South America. I'm in talks to Guatemala people. I'm in talks with Peru group. I'm in talks with the Argentinian Bitcoiners, El Salvador. Ah, all right. It's, it's gone out. Okay. Okay. It was at 3,000. Yeah. yeah. It fluctuates. It fluctuates. Years. It's between three and 4,000 though for the last few months. Okay. Yeah, man. That's good. I, 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 it would be really nice to get Ecuador and Panama to accept Bitcoin and like Bitcoinize that part. So there is less dollarization. It would be amazing. Dominican Republic for that matter. Yeah. I've actually heard that Panama's Panama's um, talking about it. Like the, the leadership is talking about um, wow. adopting Bitcoin in some way. I'm not sure if it's going to go full El Salvador legal tender, but um, I have heard that they're like trying to regulate Bitcoin. So. Oh, that's nice. That's positive. Woohoo, Latam. <laughs> yeah. I also wanted to ask you, and sorry if this is like a, too personal but how much bitcoin have you spent like since you've been traveling i guess i would have done 0 0.2 0 0.2 and a half I, I it is it is very low i know the reason the reason is just because the humans are really kind people really host me like the bitcoiners who have these cartoon character faces nft faces those who have these weird ass names as bitcoin pikachu bitcoin fool bitcoin merciless you know these all people are really kind humans and then they really host me and we end up really having a great time. So most of the people I've been really kind. That's why it's gone to the bare, bare minimum. Otherwise, I was going to spend more than that. I was looking to spend almost half a bit until now. But uh, yeah, man, the kindness of the people and contribution is just coming in. So really thankful. Like slowly and gradually, it's a constant proof of work. So always really grateful. Besides um, Bitcoiners hosting, are you still using the couchsurfing.com? Yeah. I'm going to use them in Qatar because Qatar, I was just looking for it and uh, Qatar is not at all that pro on Bitcoin, but BitRefill is really good there. Huh? But the average staying of a hotel is costing me about $100 a night. And I'm like, like, come on, like not a hundred dollars a night, like unless I'm in the Bitcoin conference, <laughs> but 
hundred dollars a night. So I, I will be using Couchsurfing back again there for a while, and then I will move. But as such, the Bitcoin community is coming through, man. Somehow or the other, we just get connected, and the things just open up. Is, is there like a substantial portion of the Couchsurfing community that's that's like aware of Bitcoin or conscious of Bitcoin? I have orange filled a few of them. So really nice. I really like that. And uh, they are really open to it since it's all about the community aspect. And I, I have a very strong profile, about 400 plus families I've stayed with. So my, my, they are really always curious, like, what the fuck am I up to now? Are you also purchasing your flights with Bitcoin? Yes, I am. I, I was using Traveler.com earlier, but they were charging almost like 50 to $65 premium on my ticket. And I'm like, come on, guys, let's not do that. Then I found Bitcoiners, so I give Bitcoin to people and then they buy me with a ticket because you save $65, $70 at the end of the day, one. And two, I just, there's a new company that started out here. It's called Fly with Satoshi. They are, I was just talking to these boys. So they're going to start off this company that is going to take a lightning. So I was just like really cool. I was like, okay, they take it and if they can give me a special prize, I try to reach out to Travala people. There's a company in uh, Vietnam called uh, Future.Travel. They accept Bitcoin Lightning too, but they're also on a premium of $50, $60 every ticket. And I'm like, oh, Lightning is fast. Just give me on the, give me like a $25 premium. It makes sense. But $60 is like, but I've been getting hotels.com vouchers from Bit people. That is awesome. I really like them. What about your other transportation, like bus tickets, taxis? Um, how are you managing that with Bitcoin? Well, let's say in Cambodia and Thailand, I was renting scooters. And I was filling petrol. So definitely an OTC trade was happening there where I used to give them Bitcoin and I should have some cash to move around. Uh, or generally, I find Bitcoiners who buy me tickets and I just send them money over chain. The same thing I did it in Cambodia, Thailand, Singapore was all Grab or the Metro card works. Uh, as soon as I've come to run to Sri Lanka, one Bitcoiner has come down from India to meet me and travel with me for this 10, 12 days. So he's there along. So I get to give him a chain wallet so that's that's how it's a mix and match as in we just keep moving me keep moving like I i'll tell you india was the only place i was like a hundred percent btc i had not used a single penny i remember i had applied for my visa to the turkish embassy and they rejected it the agent rejected it because there was zero transactions over the last three months <laughs> so they were like there is no transaction on your bank account what are you doing how are you living so finally i've started moving around some money through my banks yeah Paco, is there anything that I haven't asked you that you want people to know about traveling around the world using Bitcoin? Countries are opening up. Uh, they have this mandates of getting RT-PCR that's coming down. So you can start leaving with your families, go out. Countries are really hoping, waiting for you. Uh, there is a Bitcoin adoption. Please reach out to me. I know 18 places in Cambodia. 12 or 13 in Singapore, in India, about 30 or such places that accept Bitcoin. Uh, and I really, really request to you, to everyone who's listened to this, if you see a boat that says Bitcoin accepted here, please go down there and support that business because it just shows that we all are together. Isn't it the team Bitcoin? And people would really like to see and they would be really happy to see that, oh my God, somebody's supporting us. So please just do that. And keep stacking your sats. That's all, like, I guess that's it, man. Well, Paco, thank you very much for taking time out of your travels to answer our questions and come on the show and talk to us. I appreciate it. And I can't wait to see you when you get to South America. Thank you. And likewise, thank you so much. Thank you to the Bitcoin family who have been contributing and supporting. And thanks to you all back there. Like, it's just been a blessing. So really honored to be part of the family. Thank you. Take care. Take care, brother. Thank you, Lawrence. Thank you, guys. See you soon, man.